This lawsuit is designed to do what John Choi should have done and didn't. And when you made the decision yesterday to not charge, it sent a, a, a loud message that further action is required. And so on the shoulders of the courageous survivor, another one that took this action, uh, we stand and um, intend to move forward. Um, and bring forth uh, light and truth and the, and the evidence that needs to be revealed. There are two things um, that um, have happened since uh, Choi announced yesterday. Uh, the first is last night, Minnesota Public Radio um, released some documents that um, have been reported to have not been reviewed. Um, by law enforcement or the county attorney that they, had, that they got. And it begs the question, why not? And the reason those documents and the other evidence that we believe definitively de defines a serious cover-up, a serious pattern of concealment of Waymire, Shelley, and others by the archdiocese and the archbishop and the top officials is that um, law enforcement and John Choi chose to give them a pass. They did not treat them, nor have they treated them, like ordinary suspects in a criminal enterprise. They did not execute one search warrant. They did not seize one file. They did not depose or take uh, uh, under oath the testimony of any of those top officials. And thus, when they made the decision not to charge them for their complicity in crimes, whether it's fair to report or obstruction of justice or others, law enforcement uh, failed the children, failed the community, and failed their obligations to all the survivors that have been so harmed. So we felt and still feel that more must be done. There's no question we were disappointed to hear about uh, John Choi's decision yesterday, uh, but not surprised. I wish I could say I was. We went to him in September in his office of last year after Jennifer Hasselberger, the former chancellor of canonical affairs, blew the whistle on the archdiocese, and particularly Ninesat, McDonough, and others concerning their refusal and failure to report crimes and to conceal evidence at the Chancery. And we brought her testimony and we brought a roadmap how to do a prosecution and investigation of an archdiocese that's engaged in this kind of conduct. We instructed him and his office that search warrants need to be executed immediately on all the files of all the offenders, and we gave them the names of the offenders whose search warrants needed to be executed against. We instructed them on where those files are kept in the secret archive at the Chancery in the Archdiocese, and we instructed them on who exactly needs to be interviewed under oath uh, to get to the truth, and disappointingly, none of that was done. It was. It was claimed yesterday that they did not charge uh, the archdiocesan officials, and particularly Neinstadt and McDonough and others uh, concerning uh, Waymire. Um, and they said they looked only at the failure to report. And they said there wasn't enough evidence to show that there was a, a violation of the re mandatory reporting <coughs> statute. And he said that the reason was is that the information given them um, by the mom of a kid abused was privileged or in a confessional. That's just not true. And the police records and the records that we're going to share with you showed that that is not true and was never true. On June 15th, the mom talked to Father Erickson having learned that her son had been abused. She told Father Erickson on June 15th that the son had been abused 
and a number of things that Waymire had done. Father Erickson got permission to bring that to his superiors and the officials of the archdiocese. And so that was not a confidential communication and it was not privileged. And John Choi's legal analysis of that is defective and deficient. And he should have known this. And we're here to tell him and everybody else what did happen. So the public can know, so the police can, can reopen, and so that the people can now know what really is going on as we speak. And that's a pattern of deceit and deception. Not one search warrant was executed on the archdiocese, and so what law enforcement did and Choi's office chose to do is say, give us the information you have. Turn over to us voluntarily the information. They don't do that. They keep secrets. And when you're doing a criminal investigation, whether you're a law enforcement officer or a prosecutor, you don't rely upon the suspect to tell you the truth and to turn over the evidence voluntarily. You seize it. And they didn't seize one piece of evidence. They didn't execute one search warrant. They didn't depose or even investigate uh, in, with any rigor any one of those involved in this, this cover-up. From McDonough to Laird to the Archbishop um, or any of the other top officials. And that's uh, what needs to be done. And that's why we're taking this action, because we're going to do that. And we're going to work with law enforcement to continue to do that and exhort them. Uh, to do it better. Uh, I've never before criticized law enforcement in the, th the 30 years I've been doing this kind of work. I am critical. And the top officials of the archdiocese not only are concealing the crimes and concealing the offenders and giving them safe harbor, they're involved in an ongoing pattern of destruction of evidence, failure to report, they're violating Minnesota law and federal law. And to, um, to John Choi and his office, we are unhappy and we are, we are critical. But to law enforcement uh, and to all the law enforcement agencies, do not trust the archdiocese officials when they say they will turn over the evidence. Do not take them at their word. They have lied, they have deceived, and they have concealed crimes and they themselves are compli complicit in them. And do not treat them any better than any other suspect or any other citizen. And they have allowed this archdiocese, this archbishop, his predecessors and all the top officials to operate above the law. And it begs the question, when and who is gonna make a change? And it's the courage of the survivors and it's the teeth in this law, and it's us coming together with the law enforcement agencies across this state and in this metropolitan area to bring the resources to bear to get the truth known so the kids are protected. And that's what we want most. And to that end, uh, we're grateful um, for the courage of the survivor with whom we speak today and all those others. We're also very, very sad we're also very, very scared. And we're also very, very unhappy with what law enforcement and the county attorney has failed to do.